playing Cheryl. I'm Lavor Addison playing Kent. Hi, I'm Abner Genesee, and I'm playing Joseph LeVay. Constance Swain playing Taylor. Brian George, and I'm playing Flip. I first got the script from my first year acting teacher at Purchase, who said that you need to look into Cheryl. And this was years and years and years ago. I won't say how many years, but years and years and years ago. And I've been waiting. I just fell in love with the idea of uh, being seen. Mm -hmm. Um, And it just touched my heart so, so much that I've just, I've been wanting to play her for years now. And now I've got the chance, but you know, that was, that was just the idea of being seen. You play in the web. You play in the web. I'm going to say. Um, I first came in contact with the piece years ago um, in San Diego. I saw it at uh, Mo'olelo Performing Arts uh, Company in San Diego, California. And I fell in love with it. I thought it was incredible just from the aspect of the type of story we're telling, the type of uh, environment that was created. Um, yeah, this was a, a type of story that I hadn't seen. So mm-hmm. I was very excited. It was many years ago, so you know, I was a little younger than <laughs> I am now. Um, <laughs> but I remember then thinking, gosh, I would love to, to tackle this someday. And I even got to speak with the actor that played Joseph in that production. And he said, you'll, you'll, you'll play it one day. You'll play it one day. <laughs> there we go. And he spoke it over your life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's spoken he spoke in the truth. So, uh, so we're here. Yeah. That's my contact with it. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Hey, when I first read it, um, you know, I perused it, mm-hmm. and I was like, okay, Kent, is, he speaks a lot. Okay, I'm very, very <laughs> excited now. <laughs> and then, you know, once I got the second and third read under my belt, and, you know, the themes of family, class, belonging, yeah. that, you know, that's the stuff dreams are made of, so I was, like, very excited. Mm-hmm. And then now we got, like, a great team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think undergrad uh, was where I was introduced to it, I think, yes, uh, and I had a Taylor monologue that I would use because it was like in one of those African-American monologues, blah, 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 blah <laughs> books, and I was like, ah, that one, yes. yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> and that which is funny, uh, and then I read the play, and I was like, oh man, this is a really good play, this is really cool, and especially um, having gone to the school I went to, undergrad Spelman, there's so many so much of what is discussed in here is like embedded into that, the history of HBCUs in particular, especially a place like Spelman and Morehouse. Um, so it feels like home. I think that's why I was so excited for it because it like having done a lot of Shakespeare and just classical work, which also has its place and I love it too. It was nice to feel like, oh, this feels like my grandmother speaking or like, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I feel like I don't always get to hear that, like our language on yes. stage. Mm-hmm. So it feels yes. like we, we're speaking our language, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same. I, I I was in contact with this play in college, an undergrad, and uh, uh, really enjoyed it then, but never had the opportunity to you know perform it in any in any uh, uh, space or time. And so, yeah, once that came around, I was like, oh, this is fantastic. Especially pairing with the rest of the other shows that we have here, I was like, oh, what a great way to showcase a family, uh, specifically a black family, and how they deal with introducing new people into the family. Uh, uh, and telling that different type of side of story, which I think leads into the second question of like, what is the, how is the story different? Uh, in what ways is this story uh, that isn't often told in movies and TV or theater? Is, uh, is this no a story? No one's a slave. That, yeah, 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 yeah. No one's, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it goes that, that it, it's, awesome. not, it's not about uh, 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 um, trauma, and not, and not about physical trauma happening to black bodies in general. Mm-hmm. And so I, that is also one of the fantastic things about it. And, and definitely open up to you guys to you know, discuss that as well, too, why this story is uh, so, such a great turn from, from a lot of the great work that does exist. There are some great writers, especially black writers and people, mm-hmm. POCs who write about our struggles and stuff like that, but why this one stands out even more because it's not about mm-hmm. physical pain or trauma uh, to, to black families or black people in general. Sure. Yeah. Not not the physical trauma that we we're used to seeing, yeah, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. because there are traumas yeah, there are. in this. Yeah. In oh, this. Yeah. And um, something that I'm really excited about is having the chance to really be under the microscope in this family, you know, in this outwardly well-to-do, well-positioned, successful family 
and to really kind of look under the microscope to see what's really going on. And the different things, not just one thing. I mean, there's, there's a lot of different things going on in this family. And so getting a chance to explore that, I found was really exciting, something that I hadn't seen. Um, and I think something that our audience is, is really going to be uh, taken with. The yeah. One of the things yeah. I think is super cool about, uh, and this is just more like logistics, is the set. Because yeah. we really use the thrust in ways that the other two shows, it kind of, they expand outward and we really go in, like, you know, downstage. Mm -hmm. And what is really cool about this particular production is no matter where you sit, you're going to have a bomb ass seat because yeah. you're going to get a story. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's mm -hmm. always storytelling happening, especially like stuff that's going on with Cheryl in the kitchen. Oh, yeah. Because when you told me about the banana uh, the banana pudding and yes. how you like back there, Chef. I'm back over there dancing, <laughs> sprinkling <laughs> stuff. You know, like there's I'm always a story. Oh, yeah. Like, I didn't even know wrong. she told me. She was, uh, yeah. I was like, you are? I had no idea. Oh, yeah. Oh, That's yeah. exciting to be mm -hmm. able to have a three, a oh, virtual 360 mm -hmm. kind of experience. Yeah. 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 You can discover things Definitely. no matter where you are. And, and coming back and seeing the play again, you're going to get a totally different story if you sit somewhere else, yeah. too, which is awesome. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I like that a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. in that scene, when you're sprinkling, I think the banana pudding tastes so good, and I'm just. <laughs> I have a lot of pride in my banana pudding. Like, <laughs> I do, which is why. Mm -hmm. Why yeah. she snubbed Well, you have a lot of pride in everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Everything so well. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, well, you know, mama taught me. Yeah. You know, yeah. mama taught me how. Mm -hmm. um, but I just also love that this is in a beautiful home in Martha's Vineyard. We're not in that poverty porn, like, yeah. struggle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just nice to see, you know, some... Some affluence. Yeah, you know I mean? people going toe to toe intellectually. It's yes. not about like throwing hands, though it does get to that. Point. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's really, but it's cool that we we watch these people, even Kimber, every single person. Jada talked about that a lot in rehearsal of like all these people are highly intelligent. Cheryl, every every single mm -hmm. person is highly intelligent and going, Absolutely. exactly going toe to toe. And every time like something is tossed out, it gets picked up and then delivered again some way. And it's it's a really cool like oral experience as well for like mm -hmm. listening to it, being in it, and I'm sure for audiences as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And a play where you know black men get to make their choices and then have to deal with the repercussions. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it, in a way that's not often told. You know. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, and so, yeah. You know, bro, bro, please know well, no, something well, you about. touched upon it. Something I'm so fascinated by is uh, Joseph, my father, my my character's the patriarch relationship with his sons, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what that represents, what 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 the playwright, what Lydia is is saying, uh, or what she's ex uh, helping to explore in all that. You have on the on the one side, you have Flip, who for me, for my character, uh, represents you know. Uh, so much of the achievement, you yep. know, he's 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 very uh, successful, and and this, these are the things you need as a black man in this society to succeed. At least Joseph feels that way. Tangible right? success. The fact that Tangible he's, he's a surgeon, yes. you know, even his plastic surgery, but he's like he's doing so that you could track. Yes. Success yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But then you have on the you have Kent on the other side, for which who for me uh, represents much more of a sensitive uh, a, approach. Um, the creativeness and willing to explore and all those things that I think Joseph represses mm -hmm. and has had to hide mm -hmm. because that is a way in his mind uh, toward vulnerability, which he can't afford to uh, to show. Yeah. So he, he hides away those things. So to confront that with Kent is painful and he wrestles mm -hmm. with that, you know, and in this story, it comes to a head. Yeah. Yep. And he realizes and 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 um, makes a discovery, yeah. you know, about both sons in that way. And I, I just, in terms of the legacy and the tradition and, and black men, as you were pointing to, it's it's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. No, oh, no, no. You go because I because we sort of segued into one of those questions. But the yeah. the thing about the sons, when I was an undergrad, I always wanted to do Death of a Salesman, mm -hmm. and, I, ah. and I love the relationship. In that in that in that work and but for some reason I was always drawn to Hap you know mm -hmm. yeah. and I feel in this play it was just the perfect culmination yeah. of allowing me to be a black man to get that essence uh -huh. of 
what you know what was in that story yeah. and not have it be oh we're just doing the black version of Stamp of the Sailor right yeah. you know right, right, right. so yeah. exactly that that's what I love about this and I mean the individual relationships are just so great and well written but um, getting to be in this show that is an excellent play yes. and not have it to be not have it seen as a little less than because it's just a version yeah. of this thing. Yeah. Of this thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. We all know the Wiz is better than the Wiz. It's true. It's true. It's not. It's not. Speaking of the men in the play, let's uh, yeah. switch to the women in the play. So, yeah. so one of the questions here, we have the women are all outsiders in this play. How is yeah. this outside status similar or different from each of you? So, you know, we give the women the floor in this one, but especially their roles in this, them coming in here, and you know, mm -hmm. uh, especially with uh, uh, Cheryl being an outsider, being the, the maid's daughter, mm -hmm. but also, you know, she's part of the family, as mm -hmm. you also find out, she is literally part of the family, but like their view of watching this family function and being brought into this family as mm -hmm. fiance, and then uh, Noelle, who plays uh, Kimber, you know, the girlfriend of Flip coming into this space, and how they're navigating being within yeah. the, the male dominance of the house, even though the mother's uh, presence is also there, Vivian. Michelle Vivian LeVay. Well. She uh, named her uh, Michelle Vivian. Vivian LeVay. Yeah. 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 Um, yes, yes, yes. Well, uh, at least for me, in terms of similarities, you know, I, I come from a, a Black and Latina family, and you know, I think we can all relate. Like, there's always some some secrets. Mm -hmm. some drama that comes out and uh, I've, I've, you know, every family deals with that and I've dealt with my fair share within my family and just the idea of bringing things to light is a very big thing for me personally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I absolutely love that Cheryl does not let Dr. LeVay off the hook, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and it just, it, it's kind of cathartic to be able to play with that no i want everything out in the open matter of fact i'm gonna just tell everybody what's going on right i don't even care anymore and just breaking out of those constraints um is something that i just really just really just gets me going so i'm, <laughs> I'm a big fan of that but uh yeah no it's it cheryl's cheryl's perspective is very interesting um mm -hmm. yeah that's what i would say yeah no i i mean i i absolutely agree with you like the word cathartic i absolutely I share that sentiment. I, Constance, don't have a relationship with my biological father. I met him one time when I was uh, 15, mm -hmm. and that was its own uh, situation. Um, and so this play in particular was actually quite hard, mm. uh, particularly that confronting when I come mm -hmm. in uh, because it does hit home. Mm -hmm. And what I was finding actually uh, as an actor was a block that I did not know I had mm -hmm. uh, because I never had to access it. There was never that a story. Particular. Yeah, there was never a story that I would tell. There was so specific. Mm. There was so like right on, you know, the nail that I was like, oh, wow, this is this is right on it. So that uh, Jada was really good about like giving us, I know we, we all three mm -hmm. of us talked about it, um, like technical things that we could do because sometimes like that's what actors have to do. It's not all, you cannot always emotionally deliver, um, nor should one expect to do that of oneself or of others because it is a lot to carry these stories and tell these stories. And there are, we are human, so we have our days where we don't feel like it, just like everybody else has, has their day as well. But knowing that this is our job, and the, the skill comes in or the craft comes in when you can still deliver that because it's been shaped. Mm -hmm. And that you lean on the craft as opposed to me having to carry that or you ha yes. any of us having to carry that story. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so that it's it has been an awesome journey to confront that and to do it in, in a safe place as well. Because yes. I think that's something that has been really awesome about this particular experience. I can speak for me and I think it's true for everyone involved that Jada was really adamant about it being a safe place, yes. uh, which was which you have to if, if you're telling stories like this, especially in this day and age. Um, but something I've been watching uh, is uh, like lionesses <laughs> and, and how they uh, basically scope each other out. Yeah. Uh, that's what it feels like, the women, mm -hmm. to start. It feels yeah. like there's a lot of... Um, primal instinct yep. mm -hmm. there's a lot of like just check a lot of things that go left that aren't even mm -hmm. said where we're just kind of sizing each other up and the thing is it's not written on the page uh necessarily but it is if you know how to look for it yep and that's the thing that's really mm -hmm. cool about this play is that the playwright has left us so many little clues 
And if you have a savvy director, which we have, and savvy actors, which we have, you're going to mm-hmm. find some cool shit. Oh, and yeah. that's what we were able to oh, do yeah. by going, oh, but see this moment here? What is that about? Uh, and so I feel like that was that's just been how we've constructed this whole play, which is why it's so freaking awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's it's Complex. interesting that that the the constant conflict that you you have with uh, uh, Cheryl and Kimber, you had him flip as a character, but also I think what's interesting is that the, it's not written into the play, but one of the major themes is is patriarchy and masculinity and to- toxic masculinity because yeah. what you see displayed you know between how the women treat each other because of that's how society especially this place set in 2005 even more so than we are now you know mm-hmm. how we're addressing these issues here we have this very affluent uh uh family and it's just the men here acting a specific way and one trying to change his ways one who is falling head deep into that but also d- is uncomfortable with it at certain times and you know so he lashes out with uh in with discomfort with his own feelings by hurting people hurting uh uh uh, uh taylor hurting uh constant uh constant taylor <laughs> hurting kimber uh cheryl at times dismissing her uh not you know he stands with brothers every once in a while but then he also just you know he's like he's over the conversation between him and his brother uh, his brother and his dad has yeah and just like how patriarch and toxic masculinity also like bleeds into this show mm-hmm. and that it really is addressing that and the way that Kent addresses it to his dad at the end or how his dad explains Mm -hmm. how all this stuff, you know, Mm -hmm. he's like, show me a man who hasn't made mistakes and all that. And you're saying, but it doesn't make it right to do all these things Mm -hmm. and, you know, all that. So I think it's, and you, and how that affects women around them, how women respond to that and all. I think it's a a fascinating, uh, 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 introspective look into how not being able to be honest and careful with each other can lead to harmful trauma that isn't physical but is emotional Emotional. and mental which isn't it so true that that's what a lot of black everybody right but mental health was something that we absolutely neglected in the black community neglect in the black community but i feel like it's become through the pandemic and through uh the movement Mm -hmm. and and we can't ignore it and 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 i think Mm -hmm. that our you know this generation uh the new storytellers and what we even do with these stories that have been around for a little while is we're and we're also infusing it with that mental health, investigating that because mm-hmm. mental health is something that is also a huge theme in this play. Oh my gosh! Uh, yes. Absolutely, every and every yeah. single person is going. You know, it's like all the skeletons that everyone was trying to run away from. It was like, hey girl, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been waiting for you. I've been on the porch, you know. And I'll be right here when you get back, you know. And I, how and how true is that for each and every one of us as human beings too, mm-hmm. and our audience members? So no matter what what you look like, your socioeconomic background. Everyone can find something in this story that they go, I know that. I know that. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know that. I'm thinking particularly of that moment in terms of mental health. Yeah. Uh, that moment where I mistakenly call you Ellie. Like in yeah. mid conversation, I call you Ellie, and it's like, no, what? Cheryl. Wh- wh- yeah. Mm. What is that about? Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. The, the funny? play. The play is also very yes. funny. <laughs> wow. How do you, yes. you find the balance in the yes. production? Personally, I just looked at Lavore. Lavore is our. He's our resident comedian. Oh my god! I just try to go fast. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the key. That's He's a master at the pratfall. He yes. is master. Yeah. <laughs> he did many times in rehearsal. He would do something too extreme for the joke and Jay would be like pull it she would, we'd, she'd just shake his head like a disappointed mother just yeah, like, just like mm-hmm. why don't do that we stopped, we stopped asking if you were okay yeah 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 was, uh, that's you, what, all yeah. the board fell okay that's fine you know, uh, he tripped over the couch I get one you get to one but I love it I love it I love the willingness to risk and that's yeah. what the rehearsal space is all about yep. oh right? yeah Finding those moments and exploring and, and going out over the edge so that someone like Jada can can pull us back in. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I know so at I least just, for I, yeah. I know at least for my journey, I I need to lean into the funny, into oh, those yeah. bits of funny because that second act is so emotionally Killer. charged. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it really is. hard to make that huge leap just in a 15 minute intermission. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So to have those moments of funny for me have just grounded me mm-hmm. in in who she is. Um, and keep me kind of on that path so that I can like just let all of that emotional like turmoil and stuff just live on its own. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I need the funny. I, I know for one, I really <laughs> need the funny yes. when it comes to the funny. In my fashion, I think I share that with you. Mm-hmm. In the first half, I find myself always leaning toward the lighter and mm-hmm. trying to find the moments of lightness and 
and funny and humor. And play. Yes. yes. There's play. And play, joy, yeah. because it all changes. It all goes to shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you have to set you happens. up, make you feel like everything is totally fine. Flip that script. Yeah, flip the script on them, legitimately. This this has been a journey. Yeah. This has been a journey, and yeah. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I mean, with the pandemic and, and all the different challenges we've had, it's and doing a rep of, of this complexity, mm. um, this richness has been challenging. Mm-hmm. Uh, having said that, um, I have so much pride mm. in, in everyone here and in, in the entire company. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that being able to we really lean on each other. Yeah. Um, I think that we've really grown closer as artists. Um, and we've had a chance to explore some very different rhythms yeah. uh, from the lyre to Animal Farm to this. Um, what, a, what a treat. What, a, what, a, what an honor to do it. Um, that's how I feel. Yeah, that's the beauty of rep, yeah. too. It's like yeah. you can come and see something. Because I'm, I'm only in the lyre and the stick fly, but... Uh, for uh, Christina and Noelia, they're the only two in the entire company. They're in all three shows. So being able to, for an audience member, you know, a subscriber who's going to come out and see all three shows, you're going to get, you're going to get such a wide palette, especially from those two, because you're going to get to see them be funny and be quirky and all that stuff. Get to see them go, all, you know, still be funny, but uh, but there's a there's a heartfelt and that journey that happens in in Stick Fly in particular, and then the heartbreak and all of the the divide divisive really just like artistic work that happens in animal farm there's just Mm -hmm. i think that's the beauty of rep is because you're able to come and see all the many colors all the many shades Mm -hmm. that each and every single one of these actors have Mm -hmm. uh which we don't always get when we're just doing a standalone play because how many times you know you you play your one character your couple and you're done but everyone getting a chance to come back and see this guy be flip and then be Durant is like (laughs) oh look at that range that's crazy it's awesome it's funny because this season has been a lot of like doubling uh, characters for me except for this one mm. and this has uh-huh. been and it for me this is I've been wanting to do this play for so many years and mm. I've been waiting for it and wanted Jada to do it for yes. a while um, yes. and I just know that in the ta- in the time of COVID to do mm. rep um, and for this to be the third one I felt like I was constantly on like okay we're almost there we're gonna start stick fly soon we're gonna start stick fly mm. And then I know for me, I got I got COVID <laughs> like, for uh, the first rehearsal of Stick Fly. So I was out for all of that wonderful table work. And yeah. it, it's it's definitely been a challenge in the time of COVID. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I, I definitely think that doing all three, uh, oddly enough, kind of mentally prepared me like you're just going to take on everything mm. because you have no other choice. And uh, to do to finally get to this point with Stick Fly to be able to do it, um, and then have it be what it is with this wonderful, amazing company, and you know this great director and this great energy, it's it's like a like the best high you could ever get. Mm-hmm. I think to do rep, like yeah. it's you just don't get that same kind of thing with anything else. Mm-hmm. Even just doing one show and focusing on that, like mm-hmm. having to mentally hop between shows a huge it's a really huge challenge but it's a lot of fun it's, a lot of so, fun. Yeah. it's, it's rich for us as mm-hmm. actors and it's rich for the audience i mean speaking to the people who come to see this show uh it's an amazing experience yeah. Yeah. Uh, to get to see that and uh and hats off to this organization for making the choice mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. choosing to do this work yeah um, it was a big choice it. And, yeah big yeah. choice mm-hmm. and sustain it and support it. Um, this is the, was a regional premiere of, of this play. That's amazing. It's amazing and shocking, you know. Oh, wow. But here, yeah, here, I, I here in this, but here in this area, area. Oh, this yeah, area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never done in yet. So Colorado, yeah. You know, yeah, that's... we're getting to see something that hasn't been seen here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is great. Yeah. Yeah. And big, big thank you to the uh, Avada Center and. and and Lynn and the production crew and all of our directors, our stage managers, everybody for moving with the punches, you know, because we had, unfortunately had to delay there stick fly, yeah. you know, you know, because of, you know, another <laughs> uh, 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 little run through of COVID for a few of us, including myself. And so like, you know, the fact we've been able to be very flexible, everybody's been so much care and making sure all the actors and, and the production team is safe. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't thank you enough for that, you know, because it, does require a lot of energy and money to do that. Then the fact that they wanted to stay committed to putting these plays up, 
is uh, 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 is is very humbling. And so I'm so grateful that we're all able to be here and to play and, and experience these wonderful shows with these audiences. And uh, and yeah, so like it's just it's a beautiful experience that we're still here, still trucking along, and uh, you know we're able to stay in each other's lives for these six months, continuing to play around. So yeah, it's been, it's been wonderful. Yeah. yeah. We want to thank you once again for, for joining us on this journey and joining us in this discussion about Stick Fly, a piece that is very dear to all of us. Uh, we're happy that you're all here and hope that you will continue to come back uh, to explore these stories. Yay.